Hello and welcome back to Leon Talk Stuff. So today we're going to be doing part five, I believe it's part five, of my uh, Arrow video collection. And I realized after recording the past part, or the last part, I should say, that I had a few like assorted little uh, releases of what I should have probably included in the first um, video. And you'll have noticed one in the thumbnail. But yeah, I've got a couple of Arrow books and a couple of Arrow vinyl that I'm going to show off. So first off, let's show the big boy. The cult cinema book. Now, I picked this up on eBay. Uh, oh God, I can't remember how long ago. It was a few years ago now. And this is uh, the first, this is the first Arrow book. Uh, I'm not too sure, but um, it's an Arrow video uh, companion. And inside here, it is essentially a compilation of essays for, that are included in a lot of the Blu-ray like releases that had came out up to this point. And it also has a foreword from Ben Wheatley, I believe. So this was pressed in 2016. And uh, yeah, no, I um, I picked this up on eBay for a pretty good price um, after not even like initially knowing about it. And as you can see, there is a huge, huge, huge array of... Um, essays included which is great news especially considering some of those early arrow video titles uh with the booklets and all that stuff can get a bit pricey but uh it's set um it's split up, sorry, into certain different genres. So the first chapter is cult movies, and you have Tim Lucas talking about The Fall of the House of Usher. You've got Alan Jones on Deep Red, Stephen Froer on Zombie Flesh Eaters, uh, Maitland McDonough, Maitland McDonough, sorry, on uh, Dress to Kill, uh, Vic Pratt on With Nail and I, um, Kenneth J. Souza on The Burbs, Tom Mez on Battle Royale, and then there's a section on cult directors, cult actors, cult genres, and subgenres, as well as cult distribution. I won't go through every single thing and read every single one because it'll take forever. But yeah, there's also like essays from Ben Wheatley included. And again, the text is fairly big, um, but I mean, it's nice, especially if you're like a fan of the Arrow video kind of label and the uh, the uh, essays that are included. Uh, you get your usual pictures and books and every, uh, of like essays and stuff. There's uh, 25 essays in here, which is great. Um, or it says it brings together 25 of the world's leading genre experts and critics. Um, it's a really, really nice, nice little uh, collection, and uh, I like that uh, the spine looks very similar to the Blu-rays as well. Obviously, this is not going to fit on a Blu-ray shelf, but I, I don't know. It's cool. It's a cool little uh, collector's piece, especially considering I got into collecting Arrow quite a few years after they started so i didn't have like all of the early releases although i am trying to track as many of those down as possible but yeah first off the cult cinema uh, booklet um which i'm really really happy with um in terms of the other books i have two more which i haven't read yet but they are the novel to film uh, booklet on how the, uh, the man who fell to earth which is arrow book number seven according to this little sticker on the back which i dare not rip off um uh, Actually, no, it says seven, but if you look on the spine, it actually says three. Uh, so yeah, this is just a, an essay, um, a booklet, uh, speaking about the uh, classic Nicholas Rogue film. I can't wait to give that a read. And then we also have Philip K. Dick on film, which is book number seven. Um, and yeah, this is about the legendary Philip K. Dick. I mean, Blade Runner, Minority Report, right? Um, yeah, uh, Total Recall, of course. Um, yeah, no, um, I, again, haven't read this one yet, but I assume it's going to be a great read. And, uh, yeah, if I, if I read any of these, maybe, maybe I'll do a, a video about it on the channel or something, because, like I've said, I'd like to talk about some books and stuff in the future, too. And then, finally, in terms of the, the extra, it's like, uh, like crazy releases we have the vinyl for Keltiki the immortal monster which is this is the original uh, motion picture soundtrack I picked this up in an arrow sale I think it was the east sale for five pounds and I was kind of blown away by uh, how nice this was uh, there is there was a J card I should say um, which I still have uh, double-sided vinyl. Um, I collect a handful of vinyl. Maybe, maybe I'll showcase those on the channel at some point. I don't have a huge collection, and my collection is, uh, interesting, let's say, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, vinyl's included that, and it is a green one. Um, I'll, I'll take it out, actually. There you go. The, the Arrow, the Arrow vinyl. Um, Arrow Records, I think. Yes, Arrow Records, that's it. Um, and also included... You've got the uh, the little uh, liner notes and everything, which is really, really cool. Uh, written by Tim Lucas. 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've seen Kaltiki, um, and I think Kaltiki's a pretty fun film. I, I remember the score being pretty fun too, so I, I figured for a fiver, you can't really go wrong, like, grabbing a vinyl for a fiver as it is, but especially, like, a boutique label vinyl, I was like, ah, oh, that's cool, that's cool. But the only thing is getting this back in, so... Oh, uh, okay. Hopefully this doesn't take as long as uh, my nightmare putting back in the uh, the Wolf of Wall Street release. I was I was here for it. Felt like an eternity trying to put that guy back in. Oh wait, there we go. Awesome. And also we have the vinyl for Eric the Conqueror, which I don't own the arrow disc of. Surprisingly, I feel like I should. Uh, so this is two vinyl. There are two vinyl in here. Two records in here. Um, for all of the, like, original motion picture soundtrack. This is a really, really cool fold-out. Um, and again, yeah, I won't... This one, I think it's just a plain... Yeah, this is just a plain vinyl, so I'm not gonna bother, like, taking it out again. I'm sure you know what a vinyl looks like. And then disc two is in there. But yeah, no, I picked these up for about five or a piece. And honestly, for that price, I'm I'm happy with them. I mean, I uh, I don't know how many, like, records, Arrow records, like, ended up putting out i know they've done like a handful of like the cd releases for tons of films and stuff uh, like you'll get the original soundtrack cd with some limited editions so i don't know maybe they just went to venture out and see how the vinyl uh, thing would go but yeah for a five or each you can't complain um so next i uh i don't know if i'll be able to get from all in this video we might split it up into two but i've got all of my uh slipcover releases or special uh releases barring the limited editions uh, that i've already shown up in previous videos so we're going to go through those now i will say a few of these are missing off the top of my head i know that one missed call uh the one missed call trilogy isn't here and oh my god what's the other one uh the dead or alive trilogy uh two takashi Miike trilogies because i lent them out to uh, my friend jacob because he watched uh itchy the killer for the first time absolutely loved it i was like hey I'll introduce you to a few uh, Miike films. And also my Standard Arrow releases, uh, the Black Society trilogy, I think it's called. Um, Black Triad Society, something like that. I, I lent those out to him too. So those ones are missing from my collection, but I do own them. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get started with the free Steelbooks. Uh, actually, wait, what? Well, I have four steelbooks. I don't know where the other one is. It's probably upstairs somewhere. But let's go through these. So first off, we have Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. Uh, my favorite Fulci, easily, hands down. It is amazing. It's everything I want from, like, an Italian genre picture. I really hope we get to some 4K one day. I'm, like, dying for a 4K restoration because I have both this old Arrow steelbook and the shameless Blu-ray. And both of them have their pros and cons, but there's no perfect release of this yet. Um, but yeah, no, The Beyond is absolutely amazing. If you're squeamish, probably not a great bet to check it out. But if you can handle some uh, fun gore, some Italian goofs and all of that, you'll you'll have a blast with The Beyond. It is amazing. One of my favorite films ever. Uh, we have the Gamera Heisei Trilogy uh, Steelbook. I, um... <sighs> I picked this up just because it has this original art, and I associate this with the, um, the PS2 disc I had with that awful, awful, but incredible, uh, UK dub of Gamera, uh, Guardian of the Universe. So, uh, there's that. There's two art cards in here. I don't know if I just placed two in here. I, I assume I must have. But yeah, this comes with the original trilogy, the Heisei trilogy, outside of Gamera the Brave, because I know it's from the same era, but... Yeah, that hasn't had a standalone release outside of the Heisei box set. But yeah, no, really, really cool. And uh, finally, we have White of the Eye. In terms of a Steelbox, I haven't seen this one yet. But uh, I've heard pretty good things. I think it's directed by... Does it have a booklet? It does. Let me see. Uh, Donald uh, Donald Camel, who I believe directed performance with uh, Nicholas Rogue, who we were just speaking about with uh, the um, Man Who Fell to Earth. Um booklet there we go i keep tripping up on my words today i'm so sorry um so yeah um free steelbooks i don't own a ton i also own a battle royale steelbook but i don't know where that is i'm assuming it's upstairs somewhere um so yeah let's get on to the window box releases i uh i have a handful of these i've been trying to collect them as time goes on uh i've been able to find five and uh yeah i'm happy with these i'd like to collect more but they they are pricey. That's the only thing. Uh, I've I've got the majority of these in price misprints at CEX where they think they're just selling the standard release. 
So, uh, yeah, without further ado, first off, we have a Bay of Blood. Um, uh, yeah, a Bay of Blood, uh, also known as Bloodbath. And, uh, yeah, this is the, the window box release of a Bay of Blood. Uh, about as simple as you can expect, really. I use that artwork there. I know that's also the artwork that's used on the standard Arrow release nowadays, but I really like the artwork. Uh, really solid Mar uh, uh, Mario Bava film. Kind of predates, like, uh, Friday the 13th as, like, one of the pioneers of, like, the slasher movement. I think it came out, like, 10 years before, um, as well. It was, like, 70, wasn't it? Uh, da, 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 da. It doesn't say on the back, but I'm sure it's, like, 1970-something. So, uh, it was years before, again, uh, Friday the 13th, but kind of follows, uh, kind of, like, uh, what, what do you call it? Created the, uh, the trademark, like, kills and deaths and all that stuff. It's a really, really solid film. Great Bava film. Uh, next, we have Dawn of the Dead. I I picked this up after getting the uh, Second Sight release, which basically invalidates this, but I just wanted it just because, hey, it's the Arrow uh, Dawn of the Dead release. It's cool to own, I guess. But, yeah, no, uh, nowadays, this is, like, it's dropped in price a lot compared to what it, was what it used to cost just because that Second Sight release is is amazing like 4k blu-ray whichever you get you get so much content on there you've got the film in 4k obviously all of the cuts this one comes with it, this does come with all three cuts although the directors and argento cuts are on uh, dvd only uh but yeah no it's a cool little uh, release again i love that you get the multiple art choices in these window box releases and yeah no i'm just i'm happy i have it in the collection even if there are better releases now uh, next, we have The Exterminator. This is the... B -b 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 -b, why am I forgetting his name? Summit Glickenhaus? James Glickenhaus. There we go. It's uh, the James Glickenhaus film. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen this a couple of times. It's a pretty fun video nasty. I believe this was a video nasty, right? Um, I might be completely wrong. If I'm wrong, John, if you're watching or something, please uh, <laughs> let me know below. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was a video nasty, though. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I like it. I think it's a pretty fun film. Really, really schlocky, but it's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, next, we have the Argento film Inferno. I picked up this release because this has bonus features that are not on the standard release. The standard, uh, like, Arrow video release, um, you know, just like the standard one disc release. This has a second disc, which includes a few bonus extras, but the best thing is Dario Argento and Eye for Horror, which is a feature-length documentary that includes like interviews from Romero and John Carpenter but it's narrated by Mark Kermode and I love me some Mark Kermode uh yeah Inferno is really fun this is the second in his Mothers of uh something trilogy Free Mothers trilogy there we go after Suspiria and then the last one was <sighs> why am I forgetting the name uh i can't remember what the last one was called it was like mother of something i think uh i haven't seen the third film i uh, i've heard the third film isn't very good um but yeah no uh it's just um i was gonna say Suspiria. inferno it's a pretty good film it's pretty fun pretty fun and then finally we have maniac cop uh directed by who's the guy who made uh blue underground will lustig is it will lustig uh something like that uh yeah william lustig that's it uh, yeah, he directed the first film, uh, and yeah, I I bought this, the standard release, way back in the day, uh, expecting, uh, like, a Bruce Campbell film, and he's in it, don't get me wrong, but he's not the central focus, and I was kind of a little bit disappointed by that, I was kind of hoping he'd be the crazy cop or something, but yeah, as as the film, like, goes on, it's, it's decent, I, I do need to revisit it, though, because it's been many, many, many years. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's get into the standard slipcovers. Also, I realized I've been recording for almost 15 minutes and I haven't even started on the slipcovers, so we're definitely splitting this into, like, <laughs> a few parts, I think. So, first off, we've got 12 Monkeys, uh, Terry Gilliam film. Really, really amazing. This is the 4K release. Uh, I haven't checked out what the 4K disc looks like of a transfer or anything. I used to own the like a uh, blu-ray i've since upgraded as you can see uh yeah it's a really really solid release i remember checking out some of the bonus features back in the day when the blu-ray came out and it was great but yeah 12 monkeys uh one of uh, gilliam's more like acclaimed works but i mean so many of his films are i mean brazil uh fear and loathing time bandits like all of this stuff so it's just great to see arrow putting out so many of gilliam's films out on 4k now because i believe that is the third right uh or this this 
Fear and Loathing and Time Bandits. So they've done three so far, which is pretty cool. But yeah, 12 Monkeys is awesome. Uh, next, we've got Beyond Re Reanimated, a third film in the Reanimator series. Um, my least favorite by far, but the slipcover is amazing. I really love it. Um, I mean, that's even showing up on camera. It's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, probably like one of the coolest slipcovers Arrow have ever done. And it's like absolutely packed with bonus features too. Uh, I've only seen this once, so I'm going to have to revisit it. And maybe, maybe I'll like it a bit more on a rewatch. But yeah, it, it's the weakest of the Reanimator trilogy, like by far in my opinion. Bride is great and the original is like a classic. Um, next, we have the double feature of After Midnight and The Battery. This is a uh, two disc limited special edition uh, after midnight is the main film but the battery is also included as a uh, bonus film on a second disc and yeah these are two really great kind of mumble core like no budget horror fit uh, horror features and everything the battery is focused on like zombies and after midnight's kind of a creature feature of sorts um yeah no i really had a great time checking out both of these it's been a while since i um seen them but i know that the guys who did the endless and they're doing all the marvel stuff now why am i forgetting their names um the Da, da, da. Uh, Benson and Moorhead, there we go. I know uh, Justin Benson is in this, and uh, I think... Um... Yeah, yeah, it was produced by those guys as well, which is really cool. So I think they make cameos and stuff. And if you're into that kind of mumblecore, like low budget, like sci-fi horror kind of crowd, you'll notice and recognize quite a few faces in both of these films. But yeah, they're pretty fun and it's a really cool release. Uh, we have Beyond the Door 2, also known as... Um... Shock, or also known as Shock. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen this yet. I know it's a sequel in name only to Beyond the Door. Um, and if you've seen my previous limited edition videos, you know I haven't seen uh, Beyond the Door. But yeah, it's a Mario Barber film, and I can't wait to check it out at some point in the future. Okay, let's get another pile. Okay, we've got Black Cat by Michael Mann. This is the 4K release. I haven't seen this yet. Uh, I can't wait to check this out, though. I'm a huge, huge, huge Michael Mann head. Uh, Collateral is amazing. Miami Vice is one of the most interesting films out there. I feel like I say that for quite a few films, but I really do mean it with Miami Vice. It, it, it is nutty. Uh, I can't wait to see, uh, see the TV series at some point. I've heard amazing, amazing things. But yeah, uh, 4K release, free cuts of the film. I cannot wait to check this out, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, we've got Blade of the Immortal, directed by Takashi Miike. I should have looked this one out to my friend, too. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen this, but I know this was his 100th feature, which is absolutely bonkers. I think he's directed, like, 30 since then. I'm not kidding. That man directs so many films, it's insane. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've heard good things. I just need to sit down and check this one out. It's not even that long. It's, it's like two hours and 21 minutes. Uh, for like a film of this like type, you expect it to be like three hours. But yeah, no, um, can't wait to check that out at some point. Next, we have, oh God, this is a classic, Blood Rage. Uh, this is the old slip release. Um, I, uh, I bought this off a fellow collector quite a few years ago now. And I had the standard release, but I wanted to own this for A, the re-edited version, and B, this great, great slip cover here. Like, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the few Thanksgiving slashes. Now we have Thanksgiving by Eli Roth, of course. But, yeah, no, this is an amazing, amazing time. This is like, if you're, if you're looking for, like, a good underrated slasher, or I say underrated, I feel like it's probably getting its due nowadays but like if you're looking for one that isn't like one of the oh the friday the 13th films or like the elm street halloween films or something you you gotta check out uh blood rage it's a hell of a time <laughs> and uh yeah i um i i really really enjoy this uh, it's very fun it's been a few years since i've checked it out though so i might have to revisit this one this uh thanksgiving <laughs> Uh, next, we have The Bloodhound. I picked this up a while back in a sale. I haven't seen it yet, but it's a nice slipcover. It's a nice slipcover. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll report back when I've seen that. Uh, next, we have Brain Damage, uh, a film that I love so much uh, that I have a tag on letterbox named after this, uh, which is Elmer Core. Um, Elmer, he's obviously like the parasite on the brain and all of that stuff. Um, and I, I I use the tag if you if you follow me on Letterbox and you notice I give a film Elmer Core, it basically just means it's so bad that it's 
giving me brain damage or it's really really dumb but it's giving me brain damage <laughs> great 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 film from legendary frank hennan lotta i am um, i love the guy's work brain uh, basket case is amazing brain damage is great fun frank and hook is amazing bad biology eh, i mean I, I i reviewed that over at blueprint and i thought it was okay K in places, but I was mostly disappointed. Uh, but yeah, no, brain damage is a hell of a time. I also have the enamel pin for this somewhere up there. Um, but I'm too lazy to move right now. I'm sorry, guys. I'll show it in a future video. Uh, but yeah, this is a slipcover release. Absolutely amazing film. I feel like we're probably going to get this on 4K at some point because is this a 4K restoration? I don't know. I don't know if this is a 4K restoration. But yeah, I feel like Arrow are going to put this out on 4K at some point. This or Frankenhooker. Uh, we have The Brotherhood of Satan, which I haven't seen yet, uh, but it looks pretty satanic. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'll, uh, I'll have to check this out and uh, report back on that one. But yeah, no, I haven't seen that. Clapboard Jungle. This is a really underrated Arrow release, in my opinion. So this is a documentary from, what's his name? Justin McConnell. He's an independent filmmaker, and he kind of, like, got his start making tons of short films, so many of which are included on this disc. I, like, does it say how many? So there are two feature-length documentaries included on this, outside of the main one, and 13 short films, as well as the main feature. You are getting 16 films in this release. It's absolutely wild. But yeah, this just kind of chronicles his journey of like trying to uh create a film basically like distribute a film he interviews so many like famous people like if you look on the front you've got Sid Haig you've got Guillermo del Toro Tom Savini um uh, George A. Romero like so many like amazing amazing people on this front cover here and yeah it's just a really really solid like inspiring documentary but like in ways inspiring because I don't know it's uh it's a very eye-opening and very uh like what do you call it, honest portrayal of wanting to basically be a filmmaker. So yeah, it's a really, really solid dot, and I highly recommend checking it out. Next, maybe my favorite film in the Arrow video lineup, I'm being serious, Climax. Oh my god. Uh, Gaspar Noé film, easily my favorite Gaspar Noé film, uh, like out of the ones that I've seen, and I'm a pretty huge fan of his work. Climax is insane. I uh, really need to do a video on uh, YouTube for this. I need to, because I can't believe I haven't actually like sat down and spoke about this, given how much I love it. It is amazing. It is a trip. It is terrifying. It is one of the most insane visual experiences you will ever see in a film. Uh, there are shots in this film that go on for like 30 minutes straight, and you're just wondering, how the hell, how did somebody... A, conjure this up in their mind, and B, how did they pull it off so effectively? The performances are amazing, the music is, is horrifying, like, it uses, like, electronic and techno music in, like, this nightmarish way that only no way you could do, and oh my god, it's so good. It's so, so good. Um, yeah, there's a ton of great bonus features on here, too. There's a uh, featurettes with some of the actors, there's uh, some track-by-track uh, -track appreciations of the soundtrack. Uh, my favorite one is the video essay from Alexandra Heller Nicholas who uh, uh, basically talks about the work of Gaspar Noé as a whole it's a really great thing there's even a commentary on here from Noé amazing release amazing film pick it up pick it up not for the faint of heart, of course, but oh, it's so good uh, next we have Cold Light of Day this is a pseudo based on a true story film about uh, Des Nilsson the uh, notorious killer who uh, murdered a bunch of people in the uh, 80s like the British Jeffrey Dahmer as the back cover art states and uh, yeah this is a, a very low budget um, UK horror film it's crap I, I really don't like this film I do like the slipcover. The slipcover is really cool. It's uh, really disturbing, actually. Um, yeah, no, really, really creative slipcover, but oh my god, I did not like this film at all. But I've only seen it once, so I'll have to revisit it, because uh, I know that it's been compared to Henry. Like, on the back cover, it states it's uh, like like the British version of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll like this more on a rewatch. There's also so many interviews on this that I haven't checked out. But yeah, I, I, I wasn't too hot on this one, I'm going to be honest. Uh, speaking of not being hot on films, Dot Com for Murder by uh, Nico Mastorakis, I believe his name is. Uh, yeah, it's like a modernized rear window, but 
would be into that. It's terrible. <laughs> it's really terrible. I spent like £10 on this because I was like, hey, I want slipcover release. I like Nico's work. Not this one. This one's terrible. <laughs> but I mean, there are there are moments in it that are pretty fun. Uh, yeah, Huey Lewis is in this as well. It's it's an odd little film. It's a very, very odd little film. Uh, it, I, I love the tagline, In cyberspace, no one can hear you scream. I wonder where they pulled that from. Where'd you pull that one from, guys? <laughs> uh, next we have The Comic. Uh, another um, amazing, amazing work of art. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, this is terrible as well. This is a uh, another like low-budget, independent, like a uh, British horror film, thriller of some form like some some sort i guess you could say uh, i do like the slip cover slip cover's pretty cool um yeah the film itself is just baffling it's uh, directed by a guy who made another film called like nightmare it wasn't nightmare cinema i can't remember what it was it was a really really awful horror film i watched uh pretty recently um and yeah uh it's not good it's really really not good but uh it's interesting uh, there's parts in it that kind of try to evoke like an erase ahead uh kind of vibe i think i i watched an interview it either was on the disc or i read about it or something but yeah the director kind of wanted to evoke like erase ahead by david lynch and i'm like Okay, that's interesting. I, I respect that. I respect that. Um, he didn't pull it off whatsoever. I respect it. But yeah, bad film. <laughs> uh, we'll go up until the Ds. And then I'll finish this video. Because we are approaching the half an hour mark. And I'm trying to keep like wary of how long I speak on these videos. Because I don't want to... I don't want every video to be like a half an hour thing. I want some videos to be a bit short so you can just pop one on for like 15, 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, we'll finish the last few uh, in the C's. So next we have Contamination. This uh, I think this is a video nasty too, directed by, um, the, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Does it say on the back who the name is? Um, why am I forgetting this guy's name? Uh, da, 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 da. I can't find the director's name. And it's like, it doesn't say it on the back. Anyway, uh, yeah, Italian film, very, very obvious ripoff of uh, Alien, although the slipcover is, again, really, really nice. Arrow know how to do a good slipcover. Um, and it's got a good Goblin score as well. If you're a fan of Goblin, good score here. Packed with bonus features, but my god, it is uh, it, it's pretty laughable. It's pretty laughable. I feel like I should like this more considering how much I'm into goofy schlocky like a uh, italian cinema but i watched it once and i was just like uh, okay <laughs> i was like okay that, that was a film <laughs> uh, but yeah i mean maybe you'll like it more than me who knows who knows <laughs> um and then we have a uh, croupier or crouper uh croupier i i don't know how to pronounce it i should know this it looks like a pretty simple word uh, but this is directed by mike hodges who i'm pretty sure did flash gordon did he do Flash Gordon? Um, get Carter. I don't know if he did Flash Gordon. Am I thinking of somebody else? Please let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, he did get Carter. I don't know why I'm thinking Flash Gordon. Maybe he did Flash Gordon. Maybe he did. Well, I, I don't know. Haven't seen this yet, but uh, this is a 4K release, a two disc release. And it also includes a, a feature length documentary about uh, the filmmakers. Like, yes, he did do Flash Gordon. I'm looking on the back. It says it talks about his films and Flash Gordon's one of them, a documentary. Yeah, haven't seen this yet, but I've heard it's an amazing disc and an amazing film uh, and then finally we have William Friedkin's Cruising which for the longest time was my favorite Friedkin film and honestly it still probably is his best in my opinion um I I do like Killer Joe a little bit more I think Killer Joe is unhinged as hell but Cruising is amazing uh Al Pacino plays a police officer in this it was hugely controversial at the time because there's essentially a, a serial killer going around who's targeting gay men. So Al Pacino decides to go into like the underground kind of s and clubs and everything, uh, it, pretending to be a gay man to try and catch this killer in the act to arrest him, all of that stuff. Uh, loads of uh, like crazy stuff goes on throughout the film, but it's really, really like 
really uncomfortable, unnerving, just kind of shocking film, not just for its time, but even today, it's like still fairly shocking. And yeah, no, it's just an amazing, amazing, amazing film. I said amazing three times then. Uh, there's a commentary on this with um, Mark Mode and Friedkin, which is a great listen. And there's some archival bonus features too. New restoration. I hope this gets a 4K. I really hope this gets a 4K because there's elements in this that do feel like uh, they're kind of imitating like a jello picture like especially like with like if you look at this frame here this frame takes place uh, in like a projected like a like a cinema where like a gay porno is playing and a murder like a murder happens in that cinema it's really shocking uh i think that's right i hope i'm not misremembering because i'm looking now i'm fairly certain this takes place in a cinema this scene but yeah no amazing amazing film and uh yeah no a great way to end this video but yeah i hope you did enjoy uh, the first part in my uh slipcase releases we'll go through some more in the next video um yeah if you did leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike comment below and let me know what your favorite film that i spoke about was i'd love to hear um and yeah thank you so much for the support on these uh, recent videos and everything it's been great to be back and i can't wait to continue making videos i've got some ideas for some game related videos soon i might do a couple of reviews i might do some more collection overviews but yeah no really appreciate all of the support so far and yeah, take it easy, and I'll speak to you all later. Bye!